Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our uh, systematic theology class. On behalf of TSM, I bid you shalom. I welcome you. Devotional number two. So what do I mean, beloved, by devotional number two? It's our second session concerning the second segment of uh, systematic theology, theology proper. We have one session behind us. And uh, let's start with a word of prayer as usual, and then I will explain what uh, is my goal, our goal, our common goal. Welcome to everyone, by the way, those online and those in class. Um, we will uh, deal with what we have seen and what we are, what we have in mind for today. Let's pray. Father of grace, we give you thanks for the privilege to be able to do these things together as a body of your universal church in that context. I thank you for those who are watching online. Bless them and prosper them in their striving for the truth and to deepen their roots in the knowledge of your Son, which is something that you have commanded us to do to embark into discipleship. Keep us, Father, with an extent of good and healthy discipline, which can come only by your grace, to take these things in a serious way and to strive to apply what we learn in these things. We are thankful. I am personally thankful for your patience with a person like me. And Father, may you be glorified in the midst of it all. And we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, Amen. I repeat, we're studying theology proper, what we have achieved, beloved, so far. If you uh, listen to the devotional number one, session number one, if you prefer, we have defined it. No need to repeat everything. Now we are under capital B, uh, the sources, plural, of knowledge. And last week, a few days ago, we talked about intuition and so on and so forth, and we have defined it. And today what I'm planning to do is to talk about the second source of knowledge, tradition, the third one, reason, and the most important in this context, number four, divine revelation. The only thing that I would like to repeat with you concerning intuition, it's a source, although, like I said, it is extremely limited. And this was, tick mark, behind us, if you want to follow, just listen or watch also our session number one. Now we come under tradition. This is the second source, tradition, so you can start to make your notes right now. And when we say something about tradition, we're talking about both remote and present, present tradition and so on. As far as remote, we mean the early impression about God on the human race. The early impression, that's what we mean by the remote uh, tradition, the early impression about God on the human race. Let me say a few words concerning the remote impression, then I will speak about the present impression type of thing. Number one, there is the modern view. The modern view, modern today, they teach that man began with polytheism, the belief of many God, and upgraded slowly in monotheism, the belief of only one God. That's the modern view. I repeat, man began with polytheism, a belief in many God, and then they, mankind, upgraded into monotheism, the belief of only one God. That's the modern view. Secondly, the biblical view, basically, it's the opposite when you study the Bible. Man began with monotheism, only one God, and degenerated, degenerated to polytheism, the belief of many gods. So that's the biblical view, rapidly. Man began with monotheism, the belief of only one God, and mankind degenerated, easy to see throughout the text of the scriptures, into polytheism, the belief of many God. Both, the high view, the high view is the biblical view that I just gave you, 
and the low view shows these concepts that these concepts were passed down from generation to generation. And it shows also that tradition, what we're studying right now, can transmit both truth and error. That's one of the reasons why it is limited. So tradition is very limited also because tradition can pass down both truth and error at the same time. At the, for the present, as far as the present tradition is concerned, not the remote, but the present, if you want to call it the second item under tradition, it's the teaching which are given to our children nowadays. Number one, the present, concerning the truth about God, you know as well as I do that children exercise knowledge more readily, more rapidly, or quickly, and easier than adult can do. So the traditions here we transmit to our children is what has been taught by intuition. So what has been taught by intuition becomes the tradition and only keep in mind one thing that it can pass down both truth and error. Let me give you a summary of the progression if you can make your notes here. Human intuition, the first one here, Derive, it was deriving certain things about God that may be true or false. And by tradition, these things are passed down to the children, and tradition can pass down both truth and error. So that's how it works. By intuition came tradition, remote and present, and maybe perhaps the most important thing for you to note, that the children have a facility to absorb and it can pass down to subsequent generation truth and error. So that's why tradition, which is behind us right now, is also a very limited source of knowledge of God. Let's take the third one, if you are with me right now. The third one is reason here, and here I'm going to try to stay clear, not to lead the people astray, but reason is one of the source of the knowledge of God here. The third source of knowledge is reason. Francois, what do you mean by reason? It means this. This is the highest capacity in man to learn things about God apart from revelation. It's too crucial, I repeat. It is the highest capacity in man, in me, to learn things about God apart from revelation. This is the ability to think logically, to use reason, and this is the highest man can achieve apart from divine revelation. And it has what we call intrinsic, intrinsic value. Reason is one of the characteristics from longing to God in perfect form. Reason is one of the characteristics for longing to God in some kind of perfect form form. Let me say a few words by means of achievements of reason. That's what we do right now. I'm just giving you a few achievements of reasons, two of them. It provides the naturalistic arguments for the existence of God. It provides the naturalistic arguments for the exi existence of God. Secondly, Reason is a good source of knowledge about God in that it can provide reasonable, reasonable, comma, logical, philosophical arguments in favor for the existence of God. However, and this is the most important to note now, however, as high as reason can go, as high as reason can go, as much as reason can achieve in the realm of the knowledge of God, it cannot provide a personal relationship with God. Reason cannot provide a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. It cannot do it. It is, yes, a source of the knowledge of God, but keep in mind that it, is also, it has also its limitations, okay? in the fact that it cannot provide, cannot provide a personal relationship 
with the Father, if you want, through HaMashiach, our Messiah. This is behind us right now. This is what we take, beloved, right now, divine revelation. That's my favorite, of course. It's directly from God to man, directly from God to us, to mankind. Divine revelation, or revelation divine, if you want to, two things. It is by far the greatest knowledge available. This is the greatest knowledge available. It is 99% of all that we know about God. Okay? If we know something about God, beloved, and you hear me often saying this, if we know something about God, it is not necessarily because we have discovered it. It is because God has revealed it to us, and therefore the glory has to be ascribed unto Him. Secondly, there's two types. You know them already. You can see that it's logical to go bibliology and theology proper. There's two types of divine revelation, and you know that. First one is general revelation. For instance, Psalm 19, about the universe, the nature, the creation, and such a things. And then you have the special revelation here. That's what we talk about, the divine revelation. Both are good, general and revelation. The special revelation through his words and, of course, the holy scriptures. And if you prefer, the oracles of God. So now we have basically dealt always by means of introduction. Maybe this is something that I forgot to write right now. We were still in introduction, introductory material. We have covered the definition. Now we have covered the four sources of knowledge, intuition, tradition, reason, divine revelation. And now we finish as we speak, capital C, divisions. There is three divisions in what we will embark uh, next uh, session. We began officially, we will be out of introductory material, and we begin officially theology proper, the doctrine of God, God the Father. And we will take theism, okay? Theism, we are concerned with the existence of God, the characters of God as the preservers and the governor of the universe and so on. Then, probably my favorite part again, Trinitarianism. Trinitarianism is the unity of the Godhead, the plurality of the Godhead, and the triunity or trinity of the Godhead. Fascinating stuff. You don't want to learn amiss these sessions and so on. And in our study of theology proper, we will also include the works of God such as creation, preservation, providence, predestinations, miracles, and so on. So all that was said on Division 1 and Division uh, Devotional, rather, uh, devo uh, Devotional number 1 and number 2 today, was, as you understand now, to cover uh, our work of introductory material. So next week, uh, in a few days, we begin with theism. I will guide you with more outlines on the boards in order to learn and to deepen your roots in the knowledge of the Messiah, to grow in Him, to be able to cut aright the Word of God, which is nowadays, in 2018, probably the, uh, the highest mandate never given to the Christian faith and to the beloved in the faith. We thank you for watching. We thank you also for your support. Uh, I would like to covet your uh, sensitivity to these things, that these things cannot happen without your faith, without your financial support also. For the SWORD Ministry, we are a charitable uh, registered society. We thank you in advance for everything that you will be doing. You know that we ought to support those who teach us the Word of God. If I'm not mistaken, it's Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. We thank you in advance for these things. These things are addressed to you only by means of reminder. God bless you. Let's pray together. Gracious Father, what can we add to these things apart from saying thank you for making yourself available to us? 
If it would not be father of you, you re revealing yourself, yourself to mankind, what would we know about you? Yet you've given us 66 books, a full library inspired by you, forming the canon of the scriptures, Father. What have we done unto it? If we have done wrong, and we did, as church at large, please forgive us. Help us, Father, to be good stewards of the faith and to be able to commit to these things in a passionate way. Can we be passionate about you as you are? In your hassid, your loving kindness, passionate about us. We give you praise and thanks, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Beloved, we bid you shalom. Thank you for watching. See you in a few days. Thank you.